All right, we are on the record. As I mentioned, my name is Josephine Conti. I'm the court reporter. To begin, I'm just going to ask counsel to identify themselves for the record, please. On behalf of plaintiff, my name is Brian DeBush, spelled D-E-B-A-U-C-H-E, 28593. Thank you. I'm David Aro. That's A-Y-R-E-D, number 28530. Thank you. I think he came through. I did your okay. Yeah, it, the, it's a little hard to hear you. I don't know. Are you close to the phone or... Um... Let me... Can you hear me better this way? That is way better, yes. Thank okay. you, appreciate that. And Sheriff Smith, will you please state your full name for the record? Yes, uh, Justin E. Smith, Sheriff Larimer County, Colorado. Thank you, and will you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, okay, we can begin. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff, we're proceeding by video deposition today on a duly noticed deposition for both yourself personally and under 30B6. Um, this is 20 CV 30537, Guns for Everyone versus Larimer County Sheriff and Justin Smith. Um, in terms of deposition, have you ever been deposed before? Yes. On how many occasions? Uh, probably less than six. And uh, have any of those depositions uh, been on topics like statutory compliance or uh, uh, concealed handgun permitting? Um, not on concealed handgun permitting, uh, just on uh, general issues we deal with as civil actions. Um, are any of those civil actions related to declaratory actions against yourself or the Sheriff's Department? You have to explain declaratory sure. action, please. Not an attorney. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm speeding along. And let the record reflect Edgar Antion is uh, part of the uh, deposition at this point. He's one of the principals of the uh, plaintiff business. So uh, I'll come back to that question. Let's go through some of the simple rules. So how, how recently was your last deposition? It was in the last three months. Oh, okay. So uh, typically in a deposition, we go through a series of rules. Uh, uh, I sort of express them as our need to have you be truthful, complete, and accurate, um, and not to, to guess at particular answers. If you don't know, you don't know. Um, you've heard all those rules before? Um, I not can't say one. that I have for sure. Okay. So when I say truthful, you're sworn to tell the truth. And obviously, as a sworn LEO, you know what that means in the state of Colorado to testify and, and to take an oath to tell the truth in a matter. Yes. You understand that a deposition is just like formal testimony in court uh, minus the court. Yes. Uh, you understand that we've got a court reporter taking everything down. And so sort of the, the manner that we do testimony in a deposition is just like in court. You know, I go first, you go second, back and forth like that. Yes. Uh, when I ask that you be complete in your answers, that means if, you know, for example, you, you're not uh, entirely sure about a response, but there's something that would help you complete your answer or something that would remind you or a document you could review that you could tell me a better answer, um, that you're under a duty to supplement your answers. Do you understand that? Yes. And that's true in any civil case, any disclosure or answer that you give in discovery, you, you're under a duty to supplement at some point. Do you, you agree? Yes. And then in terms of accuracy, we don't need you to guess or speculate um, in, in, in terms of your answers. It, if you can't recall, um, if your memory needs to be refreshed, if, if there's anything that would help you become more accurate in your response, um, we ask that you let us know what those things might be so you can provide an accurate response to every question. Yes. Um, I assume you've testi testified uh, plenty of times before so you understand how testimony works. Yes. And at times there are objections. And, and so the one difference in a deposition that you may have noticed is that objections typically do not result in you uh, not responding to an answer. Uh, the objections become sort of reservations about the answer and whether it may be used later, but you end up answering the question anyway. You understand that? Yes. Um, so far, we're making a pretty clean record where no one's trying to speak over anybody else. Um, we're going to go that way, hopefully through the whole deposition. You understand? Yes. Um, in terms of your preparation for, sorry, in terms of how you prepared for your, your deposition this morning, how did you prepare? And you don't have to tell me what your lawyer told you, um, but I want to know what you reviewed and what you're aware of this morning as we start. 
Uh, the documents that I uh, reviewed essentially were those that were uh, supplied by our office um, that dealt with the uh, uh, email string uh, that went on that I was involved in anywhere uh, uh, with uh, uh, your your side's uh, case on it. And I was able to read those, uh, reviewed the uh, case that was done by one of our investigators um, when they attended the course. And I believe that was that was it. So have you reviewed the marked exhibits provided by my office? Uh, that's the first question. Yes, I, I believe those were the ones that I've reviewed. And did you review the marked exhibits by Mr. A. Rhodes office, the, the county attorney for yourself? Yes, I believe I have. Do you have any other either documents, recollections, emails, uh, anything else that you reviewed prior to testifying this morning? No, I do not. Okay. Have you had a chance to review the complaint and your county's answer to that complaint? Uh, I've read at some point, I know I, I read the original complaint. Uh, I believe I've read the, the county's response, but it's been a while. And did you bring any information with you today that would cons constitute documents, notes, or outlines that you uh, are going to use in the deposition itself? No. Okay. Um, your name, as you said, is uh, current sheriff, uh, Justin Smith? Yes. And how long have you been employed as a, a sheriff? I've been the sheriff of Larimer County since January of 2011. And prior to that, were you employed in law enforcement? Yes, I've been employed uh, with the Larimer County Sheriff's Office since May of 1991. And in that capacity, did you have managerial roles uh, prior to your taking the job as Sheriff of Larimer County? Yes, I did. What, what was that? Uh, what were those management roles? Uh, back to about to mid 2000. Uh, I was promoted uh, from the uh, position of sergeant, which I would say was more of a supervisory role to the position of captain and uh, maintained that. It was actually retitled to major at some point around, I don't know, it was early 2000s, but uh, was in a command level under the previous sheriff, uh, really from mid 2000 um, on until I was elected sheriff. In 2011? Yes. Got it. Um, as part of those responsibilities prior to becoming sheriff, were you ever either in charge of or supervising the uh, Colorado concealed carry, uh, sorry, concealed handgun permit uh, process for your county? No. Who ordinarily oversees that program within the Larimer County Sheriff's Office prior to your becoming sheriff? Uh, prior to, to uh, my election as sheriff, um, Angie was the one that has run the unit, I believe, throughout. But uh, uh, I believe appeals uh, prior to my election were coming to Ernie Hudson, who was the under sheriff, uh, under Sheriff Jim Alderton, and then ultimately to Sheriff Jim Alderton. And Angie is Angie McDonough? Uh, yes. And Josephine will spell that at the end. And Mr. Hudson was the under sheriff? Yes. And could you spell that that last name? Because I have it, I, I'm not sure I have it right. You said Alden, Ald, Alderin? Yeah, Alderin, A-L-D-E-R-D-E-N. Got it. During your time uh, prior to 2011, when you became Larimer County Sheriff, did you have any uh, policy responsibility for the concealed weapons pro permitting uh, program in Larimer County? Not to my recollection. Do you receive any uh, training uh, by either uh, state or county authorities on concealed weapon permitting prior to 2011? I don't recall specific training. I, I attend a lot of different training uh, covering topics, but nothing spe specific onto that. So let's go over some of those same questions. After 2011, you've been sheriff now for roughly 10 years, so congratulations. But uh, in terms of your interaction with the CHP program statewide and for your own county, 
the Colorado handgun permitting uh, process in Larimer County? Uh, did you receive any training or education on that process after you became sheriff? I don't recall specifically. There was a two week, uh, it's called a new sheriff's institute uh, that's put on by the county sheriffs of Colorado and they cover a variety of topics. I'd have to review uh, the syllabus from that. I, I just don't recall if uh, CHP was in there or not. It possibly was. Um, so in terms of written documents, you think you have at least a syllabus um, and maybe course materials for that class? Uh, CSOC uh, should have that. I don't know that I have it. I can look and see if I do afterwards. Is it, uh... Uh, sorry, are those the kind of documents that might be publicly available or are they only available through CSOC? That would be through CSOC. I believe they keep that syllabus because the, the new Sheriff's Institute is a statutorily mandated uh, program that they put on for all duly elected sheriffs. So uh, that would be within the association, uh, not a public record. So it's a private association and not a public uh, entity? Correct. Now I understand. Um, okay, any other uh, training, education, or experience in the CHP program statewide or locally other than uh, what you may have learned in the New Sheriff's Institute? Not that I recall. And when did you go to the New Sheriff's Institute? Uh, it would have been December of 2010. So just before you, you became the, the sworn-in sheriff? Yes, it's between the election and the uh, swearing-in of new sheriffs. Got it, understood. Um, generally speaking, uh, safe to say you have no criminal convictions and no uh, civil cases involving either more, uh, criminal impersonation, fraud, theft, uh, any moral turpitude type uh, allegation against you. Yeah, uh, you're correct. Yeah, um, and in terms of lawsuits against you, you said uh, you've been deposed probably half a dozen times. Um, have any lawsuits been filed against you personally? Um, as the sheriff, I'm named in most every lawsuit that comes through on the agency. How many uh, suits do you estimate to be pending at this time? You know, I, I'd, I'd be completely guessing. I'd have to check with, with counsel and see what they have on record. I just don't recall at this time. Um, Prior to your uh, being named as the sheriff in Larimer County, uh, d were there any suits filed against you personally? Not that I recall. And I'm, well, I'll ask this more broadly. I'm assuming there is no regulatory enforcement against you, but please correct me if I'm wrong, no. Uh, enforcement of either taxes, licensing, post certification, driver's license, uh, none of those uh, issues have ever been filed against you. Can you rephrase that question? I'm not sure I understood it correctly. Sure. Um, I'm asking if there is any uh, prior regulatory enforcement against you. So uh, post certification uh, 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 administrative moves to, to reject or decertify you, no uh, enforcement of back taxes, no uh, uh, in, uh, DMV enforcement of a license suspension of some kind. Um, is that all true for you? Uh, thank you for the clarification. Yes, you're correct that uh, no such cases against me. And what is your uh, education prior to becoming sheriff of uh, Larimer County? Uh, I have a, both a bachelor's and a master's degree. In what? Uh, the bachelor's is in administration of justice and the master's is in criminal justice. And from what either college or institution did you receive the bachelor's and the master's? Uh, the bachelor's degree came from Wichita State University in Wichita, Kansas, and the master's is from the University of Colorado Graduate School of Public Affairs in Denver. After you became sheriff, did you attend any additional classes or receive any other certifications? I've attended uh, numerous classes. Um, as far as specific certifications, um, no, I don't believe so. I, I did uh, successfully complete the uh, National Sheriff's Institute, which would have been, 
I believe that was spring of 2012. It's a week long program uh, that's sponsored by uh, National Sheriff's Association. And again, is that a private or a public entity? Uh, it's a private entity. And back to my same question from before, but I'm assuming uh, that additional training or education did not include uh, concealed, sorry, uh, concealed weapons permitting for the state of Colorado. Uh, you're correct. That was uh, national level issues. I'm assuming today you are uh, mentally able to recall. Normally you have no issues or problems with memory. Uh, is that all true? Other than being over 50, yes. <laughs> I hear you. Um, and in terms of your uh, ability to think or recall, you're not in the influence of any medication that would affect your thinking. Uh, no, I'm not. Very good. Um, let me ask about, and I'm going to display some of this on the screen so you can see it. Uh, how, how Are you on a laptop so you can see uh, documents pretty well on your screen? Uh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on an iPad, so I should be able to. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so let me just arrange things really quickly here. And I'm gonna try to do this as efficiently as possible. Okay, can you see the answer displayed on your screen? It says answer to amended complaint. Um, you, can you make it a little bigger? I can. Okay. Is that better? Uh, yes, defendant denies paragraph four. Well, I've got some highlighted sections, but I wanna make sure. Oh, okay. You, you said you've- Only general, yeah read through this and you recognize it as the answer filed by the county on your behalf. Yes. Um, and, and one of the things I, I uh, looked at in the answer was uh, both the uh, paragraphs within the answer and then the, the very end of the answer where it, it doesn't really say what you wanna have happen with the case. Um, there's, there's no paragraph that says, uh, dismiss, deny, uh, uh, get rid of this. There, there, there's nothing in the answer. Do you, do you know what the Larimer County's position is on what should happen with this case? Um, I mean, honestly, we think we're in the right on it. Uh, what the, the legal uh, response is uh, from my attorney, I, I wouldn't want to uh, throw that wording out necessarily, but. We do believe we're following the law on it. Okay, um, and then in our request for relief, we asked for really uh, three things and then one sort of generally, but the, the three things are important to discuss. So uh, we had asked uh, that the court declare the rights of each party to the case under the existing law. And, and uh, is Larimer County's position roughly what you just said, that you believe you are in the right and that your side should, should succeed and, and, and the court should declare your rights to be uh, uh, correctly applied in this case. I believe that's a generally accurate response, yes. Um, one of the things we asked for was an injunction against the Larimer, against Larimer County and the Sheriff's Office from preventing further uh, ultra vires rejections of education certificates using remote learning in part. Do you agree or disagree with that? Can you reword that for me? I can. So one of the things we asked for is that the county be enjoined from rejecting education certificates that they use remote learning in part. Okay. Uh, is the county's position that no education certificates will be accepted if they use remote learning in part? No. What, what is the county's position on that topic? Uh, simply that we're complying uh, with the law, that the law does allow 
a mix of remote and in-person learning. One of the things we asked for was an injunction prohibiting the defendants from further rejection of certificates taught partially by remote learning. Is the Larimer County Sheriff's Office position that uh, it should continue to reject certificates taught partially by remote learning? Well, we are uh, we are uh, accepting certificates that are taught. We we have been for uh, partially uh, online learning. Uh, does that mean that there was a time when Larimer County rejected certificates if they were uh, partially taught by remote learning? You know, I, I honestly can't answer that one directly because I know there was a change in the statute sometime during my term in office um, when it was amended uh, dealing with those issues of online. Um, I, I'm not typically involved in, in all the day-to-day -day decisions on which ones are approved. So um, I haven't looked at, at what those are, if we ever had an issue with the online prior to the change in statute that, that clarified that. Because at the beginning, it, it made no reference to it. Do you know when that change in the statute occurred? All I can tell you is that since my term in office, I, I can't remember the year, unfortunately. OK, so some by, sometime between January 2011 and now, you believe the statute to have changed to allow for, uh, in part, uh, a remote uh, learning experience for concealed weapons applicants? It's my recollection the statute changed, uh, clarifying that they could not be fully online. I don't believe the online portion uh, had been addressed in statute before, to my knowledge. And you saw in our exhibits where we pulled the legislative history on exactly those uh, issues? Um, I, I don't recall seeing those, unfortunately. I apologize. Okay. It would be exhibits um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, it's, it's all of those. Uh, okay. you, you, don't, you don't remember looking at those? I don't recall them uh, sitting here this morning. I'm sorry. Um, Uh, I'm going to use the year 2013, although I, I, I don't think your memory is specific, but uh, on or after uh, the 2013 legislative session, did Larimer County change uh, their either policy um, or permitting process for concealed weapons permits and remote learning? I don't know that I would say we changed it. it we were just clear that... Uh that uh, online, uh, partial online uh, was allowable. Do you know when the Larimer County Sheriff's Office uh, changed that policy? But, and again, I don't know that our, if our policy specifically changed the interpretation of what was allowable was just clear at that point. Um, that, that online uh, was a, a partial option on it. Um, I don't recall that issue had come up uh, prior to the statutory change for us. I, um, I don't see them on a day-to-day -day basis, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, is it Larimer County's position that an entire uh, concealed weapons permit course by a certified instructor cannot be taught 100% online? In other words, the entire course cannot be presented by internet? Uh, that's my interpretation of the statute. And what is Larimer County's position on how much of the course must be taught in person or, or how, how long that in-person uh, class must uh, consist of? We don't have that spelled out in the policy. Uh, those are simply looked at on a case-by-case -case basis since the statute uh, doesn't give a clear definition. We just have to look at them individually. We don't have a, a set standard necessarily. In paragraph four, so you can see that uh, Larimer County denied paragraph four, and I, I want to sort of explore why. Um, paragraph four was was pretty simple. It said the requirements of a handgun training course for the statute under 1812-203 uh, had, had two types of classes described. One was law enforcement training, and the other was a private course taught by a training school or certified instructor. 
what is Larimer County's understanding of, of what a certified instructor either consists of or, or what's sufficient to, to be a certified instructor for a concealed weapons permitting class? Actually, Angie uh, deals with those and, and makes those decisions. Uh, I'm not typically involved. Um, you know, we, we have looked like on the post part, that's pretty clear for a post instructor. Mm -hmm. um, I know the statute talks about um, nat nationwide organization that does uh, training. Uh, typically, NRA is one that comes to mind for a lot of folks, but the specifics of, of which ones are acknowledged um, Angie actually uh, goes through those and makes those decisions as they come in. And so that's Angie McDonough again? Yes. And so um, is she a sworn law enforcement, sorry, in what capacity does she serve the Larimer County Sheriff's Office? What's her job? Uh, she is the uh, concealed handgun permit. Uh, she, basically, she's the unit supervisor there. She has uh, one part-time person, but her full responsibility is accepting, processing those applications and uh, putting together the permits um, that uh, qualify. Do you know what uh, training, education or experience Ms. McDonough has in terms of uh, that permitting process? I do not. Okay. Um, is it safe to say you have delegated some responsibility for assessing those uh, applications to Ms. McDonough? Yes. Is there anybody above her that would supervise or provide uh, additional input on that process other than yourself? Yes, at uh, different times, uh, we've had different people that she's uh, reported to um, that gave her some supervision. At one point, uh, I believe the support services lieutenant, uh, she would uh, consult with, I think, and, and uh, report to. Um, typically, if they had uh, an application where there was a question, you know, if it's a black and white, somebody, you know, is clearly not eligible to possess a firearm, uh, that's an easy call for Angie. But when they get to the ones where uh, there might be a question if they were a danger to sell for others, or if there was a issue with the suspension of a permit, uh, she worked with that lieutenant. And then at some point that transition uh, to those typically being handled uh, by the sergeant in professional standards, and that's where it's at today. And so was that transition to the sergeant in professional standards on or after March of 2020? It would have been before March of 2020. And who would that sergeant be that would have, have that sort of oversight capacity over Ms. McDonough? Uh, that is Sergeant Matt Cherry now. To clarify, he does not supervise uh, her work or supervise her directly necessarily. But uh, again, if we have suspensions uh, that come in or somebody appeals a suspension, uh, typically what's done is uh, that sergeant will be the one to communicate with the individual advise them of the reason for suspension, et cetera, and uh, interview them, get the information to provide to me to make a decision uh, whether we continue with a, a suspension or revocation. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily supervise Angie's work on a, a daily basis, more just puts that information together on the, the specifics of an individual uh, permit. Okay. I'm going to sh hopefully display exhibit. Sorry, give me a second. I'm showing you what's marked as exhibit one. This was a uh, posting in June of 2020 on the Lerma County Sheriff's Office website. It's just got a, a, a written portion in the middle and I wanna ask about that written uh, two sentences. Okay. Uh, do you want me to enlarge it? Are you able to see it? 
if you could enlarge my, I got out without my glasses this morning. Yeah, I apologize. Thank you, that helps. That's better. Yep. Okay, so this, this starts with a heading called training disclaimer and it's under concealed handgun permits. Do you know who put together this uh, change to the Larimer County Sheriff's Office website? I don't. Do you know who published this statement uh, to the web on Larimer County's behalf? Um, I would suspect that uh, and this comes from a communication from Angie to our web folks on uh, uh, what stuff went up under under her page there that dealt with concealed handgun permits. So this was the responsibility of Miss McDonough, most likely. That would be my guess. Yeah. And was th this Larimer County's official position as of June nineteenth of twenty twenty? Uh, it was our official position that we were not at that point in time, based on the information that we had, able to accept those certificates, correct? Okay. And I, I want to make sure I understand, based on what you told me before, as to, to what this says. Uh, was it Larimer County's belief that as of June 19th of 2020, that Guns for Everyone certificates would be rejected if any student took the online training? At that point in time, based on the knowledge that we had from our investigation of uh, the program that he was putting on uh, through Guns for Everyone, um, that those certificates, as we had gotten from our a person who attended did not meet the um, requirements of the statute, so we were unable uh, to honor those. That, that may be an answer to a different question. So listen okay, to what sorry. I'm asking. This says, this statement says that certificates issued by Guns for Everyone or Edgar Antelon that were issued in 2020 to students who took online training would not be accepted. So this seems to identify a specific issue and rejects all certificates in 2020. It's my understanding um, what that was referring to, again, was the certificates that we were getting at that point in time that dealt with his online program that we weren't able to verify. So at that point in time, and it was my understanding that that was an adjustment he had made as we were all working through uh, the COVID issues and, and uh you know, the different health regulations out there, he'd gone to online and uh, based on what we had understood that that version of the program, we could not, uh, we could not find to be in compliance. So uh, hopefully that um, answers your question. Well, let me, let me, let me ask an additional question. So uh, was it Larimer County's position back in spring of 2020 that the online uh, training by guns for everyone was insufficient? It was as of the date that we had conducted in, uh, our review. Uh, and so I think that, that June 19th looks accurate to me. Okay, and what was insufficient about the online training provided by Guns for Everyone in the spring of 2020? Uh, the thing that, was, that uh, was the biggest concern for me that clearly was an issue in the law was that uh, the certificates were handed out as blank certificates, didn't even have a name and could simply be photocopied. And along with that, uh, when our investigator attended the program, uh, there was no verification of who he was when he came in. Um, but the biggest part was that uh, blank certificates, it didn't have a name and guns for everyone uh, couldn't clarify who had gotten those. So um, without the ability to know who had attended the program, we couldn't verify if the certificates or anything uh, that came to us uh, were going to be uh, accurate. I'm going to come back to that uh, same response, but I want to ask specifically, did Larimer County ever ask uh, Guns for Everyone or Edgar Antelon to verify any particular certificate by a prospective applicant or student? You'd have to check with Angie on what her communications were. She was the one that was directly in communication uh, okay. with Mr. Antelon.
let me ask from from this uh, statement. I, I'm not sure if I I'm not sure if I'm understanding. Uh, this statement says Larimer County conducted its own investigation and found this type of training does not comply with the state's training requirements. Uh, what about the training was out of compliance with the state's training requirements? Not the certificates and their authenticity, but the training requirements and the information offered in the course itself. What was out of compliance, if you know? The, uh, the issue that we had, uh, the primary one, uh, again, came down to blank certificates that uh, that's a part of the program. The program includes that when somebody completes it, they get a certificate of completion. We rely on the uh, authenticity, authenticity and accuracy of uh, those certificates. And to know that blank ones were handed out uh, was simply too problematic for us um, to be able to acknowledge. Uh, it wasn't gonna be up to us to call any provider for every single applicant and ask them if that certificate was accurate, uh, we have to count on those. Uh, and we did have some challenges when uh, I'd asked Angie to reach out uh, in the beginning to Mr. Antalon. Uh, he, he was not very willing to work with us to get those questions answered, which is why we ended up taking the step of sending somebody down because he, he chose not to answer those questions to help us on knowing how the program worked. Um, so with that, uh, we were forced to, to do that. Uh, the other issue uh, that did create some concerns for me uh, was the fact that uh, what we found out in that investigation was the, the online portion of the program, which was the vast majority time-wise of the program, uh, was the ability to just pull up a, a YouTube video um, that you didn't log into, had no verification that you had viewed it. Um, learning that and having looked at that myself, um, that's inconsistent with uh, the online training uh, that I'm used to, that we deal with, where an individual that does an online course uh, typically is given a, uh, a login and it's able to at least show that individual logged in and watched it based on what we saw it was another concern on top of the certificates that there was no verification that anybody who walked into uh, that building on the day that our, our investigator did uh, no verification they had necessarily even pulled up the video and watched it and and that didn't really meet the standards of what we see with online training, typically if there's some form of verifying the person uh, watch that. So uh, that was another area of concern uh, that, that uh, really wasn't resolved for me based on our investigation. Okay. Um, other than Ms. McDonough, uh, did any other personnel from Larimer County Sheriff's Office reach out to Guns for Everyone to uh, raise these I guess I hear two issues now, but uh, raise these issues with the provider? Not that I'm aware of. So it would be Ms. McDonough's job to, to deal with those sorts of issues directly with uh, any individual education provider? Uh, yes, that, that is in her area of responsibility. So nobody else would be involved in that typically. Okay. I'm going to move to exhibit three. And this one, unfortunately, is written sort of small, but this is a Facebook posting by Weld County Sheriff's Office. Um, and this talks again about uh, issuance of a concealed handgun permit and partial as opposed to 100% presentation of a class online you know, versus in-person time. Uh, I wanna be clear that Larimer County Sheriff's Office position after the change in the law in, in what hypothetically was 2013 was that a portion of the class could occur online. Yes. And that the law is silent as to the content of any particular class, its duration, uh, its presentation, 
um, other than being presented by a certified instructor? Yes. Okay, I'm going to switch to one of your own exhibits so you can see what I, I have identified as a, your exhibit A. Exhibit A, can you see that? And it's, again, it's kind of small. Can you bring it up just a little bit more if you would? Yeah, it's a, it's a poor copy and it's, a, it's pretty small, but I'll, I'll blow it up as big as I can. Okay. So this is, appears to be an email from you to Angie McDonough on April 20th of 2020. Yes. This comes from uh, an original email, I think from Sheriff uh, Pella in Boulder County. From Sheriff Pella, yes. And it came out of uh, th uh, an email three days earlier from the Sheriff in Boulder County. Yes. It said his county was not going to honor the training certificates uh, based on uh, and I'm not sure if I understand. I, I think this is the, the earliest mention of this issue with online training and that Boulder County was gonna refuse the certificates by the organization. That's essentially my read of his email, yes. Um, and that they had sought input from uh, someone named James Spoden at CDPS. I think that's Department of Public Safety, so same. Uh, department is CBI, um, and and they had gotten an opinion from them about uh, course requirements and online training. Can, can you rephrase the question? I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, was part of that email chain an email from Mr. Spoden at Department of Public Safety with Colorado about online training? It appears to be an uh, that lower down was an email that came from Mr. Spoden. Um, and that uh, pub Department of Public Safety was taking the position that the entire course could not be uh, conducted by internet. I, I see the statute reference that talks about that and talks that it, it, it that, can't be an entirely online. That's my read of it. Is that consistent with Larimer County's position on this same statute and how those courses are to be presented? Yes. Um, sorry, I'm handling a lot of screens at once, so I've got to kind of flip through these as we go. Um, okay, uh, your uh, county's exhibit B is roughly 28 days later or so, and it is May 11th of 2020. And there's an email chain here between uh, yourself, Angie McDonough, who you've identified, and Edgar Antelon. Yes, I see that. Do you recall uh, your communication in this string? Can you do me a favor and bring that up a little bit more so I can see yes. that? Yes, sir. Uh, Back down there that's go. max size right there. Okay, and I want to go down to the bottom where the, the chain sort of begins and then go upwards. So it, it okay. uh, we go through it chronologically um, because I'm, I, I try to track sort of how this went, um, but I'm not sure I, I completely understand. So on May 7th, there was an email from Mr. Antelon um, that indicated a student told them that the certificates were being rejected. I see that portion. And specifically, he said, because they're currently doing a portion online that the certificates were being rejected.
I see that. Um, so he pointed out that the statute seemed to allow for at least a portion of the class to be conducted online, and Ms. McDonough's response is directly above that later that same afternoon. Uh, just reading through this real quick. Yes, sir. Okay, I had a chance to read it. Can you rephrase your question? Yes, sir. So uh, let me just ask my, my first question. First of all, was this the official position on May 7th of 2020 uh, by Larimer County that Ms. McDonough expressed? I, I don't believe that's quite, what I'm reading there is not accurate and consistent. I, I think uh, Angie may have, have misstated um, it, the issue really was trying to verify that there was, in fact, an in-person element to it. Um, it's not accurate to say that we weren't accepting if they had um, online uh, portion of it. The issue that I had discussed with Angie that was my biggest concern, again, comes back to having an idea. Were we talking, I mean, if somebody just walked into a building, I don't consider that to be in person, mm -hmm. um, Understood. but actually have some training. So um, my statement to Angie was essentially trying to sort out and figure out if we could understand what how this program was structured and uh, understand that there was an actual in-person portion of it. So to say that we didn't take online is, is not consistent uh, with how we were operating. I think that may be a a misstatement. It was just that uh, we verified that there was an actual in-person portion of it. Mm -hmm. And your response, as as she quotes it, and I want to make sure that's your response, is uh, she said that Sheriff Smith, she forwarded the email to Sheriff Smith so she could get a final answer, and it says here is his response. Was that your response to Miss McDonough at some point? Because it doesn't appear in the chain anywhere, so I want to make sure that paragraph there with the quotes around it, that's your response to her. Uh, that appears to be accurate and consistent, <clears throat> excuse me, accurate and consistent with uh, my communications with her. Okay. And this uh, is your statement indicating that the applicant can provide a notarized statement detailing the, the class, the times, um, their attendance, how and where it's conducted, um, and they can submit that to the department. Yes, because we were unable to get that answer um, from Mr. Antelon. Was it your understanding that prior to this email on May 7th of 2020 that that request was made to Mr. Antelon? It was my understanding, uh, my recollection that Angie had reached out to ask him uh, based on the original email we had received you know, via Boulder County as to how the program was set up since we were being told there was concerns that there was actually no in-person and that he uh, chose not to give us anything specific other than to send a photograph that he said was students sitting in a room and uh, saying that there was an uh, in-person portion, but wasn't able to help explain that to us. Did you believe that that communication occurred before or after this email on May 7th? I believe it was before uh, the May 7th is my recollection. So I'll, I'll represent to you that the email chain here doesn't seem to have anything prior to May 7th of, at 1114 in the morning when Mr. Antelon writes that he heard from a student. So my question is, do you, are you aware of any email from your organization to Guns for Everyone or Mr. Antelon prior to May 7th at 1114 in the morning? I do not recall if it was an email or a phone conversation um, that Angie had. Uh, I just remember a discussion about the communication and I, I believe it may have been in a phone call. I, I don't recall specifically the form of the communication, and I don't know if it would have been in the same string or not. Okay. Uh, just short of 30 minutes later, uh, Mr. Antelon responds to Ms. McDonough. 
Um, and, and so this is still the same day. And Mr. Antillon says uh, the concern is that your requirement is expressed in that quoted paragraph imposes additional uh, burdens on the applicant beyond what's allowed in 1812-2013. I see that. Do you agree or disagree that the additional notarized statement imposes a requirement beyond that statute? I don't agree that it does uh, in that we are simply trying to understand if there was in fact some true in-person portion of the training. Uh, normally uh, the people that provide that training answer those questions when we bring them up and help us with that. We were simply trying, we were trying to find a way to honor his certificates uh, truly um, because he wasn't choosing to answer. We thought that going a different route with the student might be helpful. So he, he quotes the actual statute here and says, an action or rule that encumbers the permit process by placing burdens on the applicant beyond those sworn statements and documents detailed in part two of 1812, or that creates restrictions beyond those specified is in conflict with the intent of the law and is prohibited. Do you agree or disagree that the notarized statement you requested in that quoted paragraph violates that, that very statute? I don't believe that we were violating the statute. Okay. And then Ms. McDonough responds four days later um, on May 11th. And this response is uh, Ms. McDonough's statement. Is it fair to say that every time Ms. McDonough uh, issues an email to, to Mr. Antillon or Guns for Everyone that she is reflecting the official position of the Larimer County Sheriff's Office when she does so. She's doing her best to, to deal with this situation and explain our position. Okay. But it is nevertheless Larimer County uh, Sheriff's Office's position expressed in the emails. Uh, she's doing her best to, uh, this, this is a unique situation we were trying to get sorted out. She was trying to explain to uh, uh, the Guns for Everyone staff what the concerns were. Okay. And so what she expresses here is um, that Larimer County Sheriff's Office will require the new affidavit and would refuse uh, the certificates from the organization if they did online training and then made an appointment only to pick up their certificate. Uh, that seems to be exactly what she expresses here. Is that a question or a statement? I'm sorry. Do, do you agree that's what she expresses in this email on May 11th at 1144? Let me, let me reread that. Please do. What I believe in reading that, that, that she was expressing was that uh, we were simply finding a way to verify that there was in-person learning and not just showing up to pick a, up a certificate and uh, counting that as in-person. Okay. And then he responds just about 30 minutes later um, to Miss McDonough. Um, and he says, uh, well, you can read the email the same as, as, as I do, but he says there's definitely an in-class portion. There's definitely an online portion. Uh, he attached a picture of students in the class and he could submit videos and more pictures. So he offered to prove uh, personal attendance in a class. What I'm reading is, is his response to providing information to her at that point in time mm -hmm. when he found out that we weren't uh, accepting the certificates, yes. Okay, and he offered to provide additional evidence. Uh, it states that in here. Was there any request for him to provide any additional evidence that you know of? You'd have to check with Angie on Angie. that. Got it, okay. And, and so let me clear something up for myself so I understand. So Angie really, uh, operates basically her own department over concealed handgun permitting within your uh, sheriff's office. 
it would be accurate to say that she uh, operates the unit, yeah, not a department. I apologize. Um, and in operating that unit, she's not reporting daily to a supervisor because she is in, a, in effect the head of that unit. On a daily basis, uh, she operates fairly independently, yes. Um, in exhibit B, which is your disclosure to us, there was only uh, one other email after all of these, but that was to you. Um, and it's it's this section that I'm highlighting right here, uh, right after uh, Mr. Antalon's response. She about a minute later wrote uh, a short email to you asking, "Do we want to keep going back and forth with this guy?" Um, and and she included uh, exactly the response from just I, I apologize two minutes before, where Mr. An Antalon that. where Mr. Antalon offered you know to provide additional evidence or pictures and and you know indicating they would be cooperative if there was a request for additional information and your response seems to be this this last email on may 11th at 12 30. this string that i see on this one that that's the top of it yes that would be the last on uh, that one that was printed off yeah may 11th 12 30 this seems to close out contact with uh, guns for everyone Yeah, on that string, it appears to be the last one, yes. Okay. And your response was, no, we don't need to be pulled into an argument with them. We are tasked with determining who provides a program that meets the standards. We don't need to debate it with them. So that was uh, your response and your official position as a sheriff. Uh, that was my response. And, and I don't recall if this also included uh, phone calls that Angie had uh, with Mr. Antalon or if it was just email, but by that point, uh, we had looked to find a way to, we were trying to, to verify and the in-person part um, and believe we'd found a way that was uh, workable. Okay. So by May 11th of 2020, was it Larimer County's uh, official position that those certificates would be rejected? I don't recall the specific date in there um, because it was, I believe, I believe it was after that that we sent the investigator. I don't recall that date off the top of my head. Um, are you aware of any other written uh, communication to Guns for Everyone or Mr. Antalon requesting the information he offered on May 11th? I'm not aware of any other uh, communications that Angie might have had that anyone from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office would have had with Mr. Antalon or guns for everyone after May 11th of 2020? Um, uh, you know, I, I know there was more communication uh, with him at some point. I just, I don't know without seeing the documents of anything else that came. Uh, I know there was a point not long after that, that uh, we were engaged with uh, your firm on that from letters that we got. Um, I'm showing you what's marked as your exhibit C. And this is roughly eight days later. And this is when I think you contact Robert Coleman, who I, I assume is a, a member of your office. Yes, uh, Robert Coleman is the captain over the investigations division. And, and you asked to open an investigation of the organization Guns for Everyone on the 19th. Yes. And this is that email requesting that uh, investigation be opened. Can you, can you uh, enlarge that a little bit for me just so I can verify what I'm looking at? Yes, sir. Thank you. Can you scroll down to the bottom if you would, please? Thank you. Yes, that is the email that I sent to Captain Coleman. Okay. Um, I, I have questions about two of the lines in this uh, email. And it's these two in the middle. 
this says by May 19th, uh, your statement to your captain was, when we asked for details of what is only and what is not, they refused to provide any additional information. And I'm not sure if I understand, I, I, I don't think that's what you meant to express exactly. So can, can you explain what you were uh, indicating in this sentence? Uh, yes, thank you for, for catching that grammatical. Uh, um, at, what I was intent was what was only online or, or what was in person and what was online. Okay. Yeah, so only, I believe, should have been online. Okay, what is online and what is not, they refuse to provide any additional, that's the way that should read. Okay, yeah. and, and that was uh, your understanding of, of what had gone back and forth between your office and the organization by May 19th of 2020? That was in essence where I believe we were at from other communications and she had um, earlier with Mr. Antillon where when she had asked him prior to us implementing the request of students to verify what it was uh, when Mr. Antillon had, had chosen not to, um, that was kind of where we had, had ended up in my opinion. Okay, but you agree with me on May, at least on May 11th of 2020 that, that morning, Mr. Antillon was offering to provide additional information. There just, there was no other request for it. So I that's a, do that's, see that. Okay. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I do see that other email that where there was the mention of providing video. Mm -hmm. um, and Mr. Antillon's clear statement was that a part of the class was, was in person and part of it was not. I believe that's consistent. Um, and then the next line in this email of yours says, we are, are not getting letters from an attorney on their behalf. And I think you meant to say we are now getting letters. You were correct. That was the intent there. Okay. Um, so you asked to have someone sign up for the class um, through the website and investigate the, the class presentation. Yes. And then we get the, the, the class sign up for an investigator, I think Tyler Thomas on May 30th of 2020. Yes, I believe that's when he signed up for the next class he could get to. And so if I, I sort of understand the certificates by Guns for Everyone were rejected during the month of May um, until the investigator was sent to that class. Is that accurate? I believe that's consistent, yes. And then after that investigator concluded that investigation of the May 30th, 2020 class, the certificates were also rejected. Uh, for a period of time afterwards, yes. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna get to exhibit four. And again, I'll blow this up so you can see it. And I don't have the header on the uh, email, so I can't, I can't, it just starts right exactly where you see it. Um, this appears to be your email, roughly the middle of June of 2020 to all the other sheriffs in the state of Colorado. Yes, that does appear to be that email. And it references a prior email about the CHP class presented by Guns for Everyone, uh, but it doesn't say whose email that was. Um, I'm assuming that was not your prior email that you referenced in the very first sentence. You are correct. I was referencing the email that came out through, I believe it was our association that was uh, the communication included Sheriff Pelly and uh, CBI. Okay. In this email, when you sent out the, the email, uh, you indicate you, the Sheriff of Larimer County, will not be accepting any applicants from this program based on the fact that blank certificates were handed out. Yes. Was that your sole and only reason after the investigation for refusing the certificates? There were certainly, as I've stated before, other concerns uh, that came up uh, with the program, uh, but the one that, again, really tipped the scale for me that I just couldn't get past was the blank certificate. So that was, that was the primary and, and that 
was the black and white piece of it. There were other concerns. Again, I didn't believe it to be uh, necessary to share those other concerns with uh, other sheriffs, just what I'd found out in the blank certificates. Okay. So I'm going to introduce you to a, a, a concept in the law called the, the but for cause. And that means but for some solitary cause, the accident wouldn't have happened, the, the person wouldn't have died, the certificate wouldn't be rejected. Is this the but for reason for rejection of those certificates? In other words, in the presence of that, uh, those blank certificates, you could not accept the certificates from the organization? I believe that's accurate. So uh, in the first line of this outline paragraph where it says setting aside any opinion on the quality of the online or in-person training presented, does that clearly indicate you were not using that to reject the certificates? It, it would be a combination of that. And you have to understand there's a lot of communication among sheriffs over the years on you know, how, who accepts what for programs. So you have to understand that we have those conversations uh, when we meet and, uh, so that's an ongoing issue, but the, the true but for uh, simply came down to the blank certificate. Okay, so that was the, the reason why after this email in the middle of June of 2020, certificates would be rejected because they were blank when they were handed out. Yes. Was there any effort made to reach out to Guns for Everyone or Edgar Antelon to, to point that out to them and ask them to remedy that issue? On that, you'll have to check with Angie. That would okay. have been her communication with them. And then uh, in the email that I received, there's, um, I guess, three attachments, about 1.9 megabytes. And I can't, I, obviously, I can't tell what those are because there's no names uh, in the attachments. Do you know what these three things were? I know that one of them, based on that read uh, is a copy of the blank certificate. Um, if I were to scroll back up and read to the email, it might say what the other attachments are. Uh, I'll go up to the top so you can start at the top. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can scroll down. So uh, one of them based on that was uh, most certainly the blank certificate. I believe uh, at least one of the others may have been the link to uh, the uh, essentially the report that I got on uh, investigator Thomas's time there, but we'd have to verify with, through our emails uh, what that was, but that's my recollection. Uh, as to a third, I, I don't know unless that was broken up into two different pieces. I'm just not sure we could look. Okay. In terms of your investigator's report from the class he did attend on May 30th of 2020, um, Did he point out that some portion of that class was an in-person class? Yes. And you agreed with me earlier when I uh, asked you about whether the statute authorizing that class was silent as to its duration. I'm sorry, can you rephrase that? Yeah, you agreed with me earlier when I asked you about the statute authorizing these uh, handgun safety classes and the fact that the statute is silent as to any duration for the class. Yes. And it also doesn't say what proportion of the class must be in person as opposed to online. It does not. And in terms of the certificates, uh, the certificates are, are the, there's almost nothing in the statute that talks about the certificates themselves. 
other than it coming from a certified instructor, there's nothing else that outlines, correct? And so nothing in the statute currently says anything about the nature or content of the certificates? It's not specifically addressed, no. I'm showing you exhibit five. And again, I'll blow this up as big as I can get it. Um, I'm going to assume that Ron, Ronnie Everett is the counterpart to Miss McDonough in the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. Um, but but her, her, her name isn't as important as the, the content of this exhibit five and Ms. McDonough's statements. Um, so you said you had a chance at least to review the exhibits that we endorsed before testifying today? Yes. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the earlier emails and start at the bottom and then try and go up. So by May 21, um, El Paso County contacts Ms. McDonough um, about guns for everyone's concealed handgun permit course. Yeah, okay, can you can you re, uh, just restate that if you would please? Yes. I was trying uh, to read it. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go right ahead and let me know when yeah, you let me let me read it. I'll take your question. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, I had a chance to read that portion. So uh, El Paso County conducted another investigation or actually it sounds like it's an earlier investigation of the Guns for Everyone courses at some point in May of 2020. Um, did you, were you aware of or did you receive anything about that investigation other than this email that uh, the county produced to us? I don't have a specific recollection from the time that that came in of seeing the email. I don't recall if I would have been made aware of it either through my counsel in this process or through some conversation with Angie. I do remember some vague reference to El Paso County, but I don't remember specifics. Okay. So, so it wasn't the case that El Paso County was coordinating with Larimer County on this? Uh, not anything that I was involved in. Okay. Uh, do you know if Larimer County ever received uh, either the memo indicated by Ms. Everett or the investigation by a tech indicated by Ms. Everett in this email? I do not know. Okay. Would Ms. McDonough likely uh, know that um, if, if you personally do not? I guess I'm just going to have to have you ask her. I will. I will. I, I, I just don't. So, so in terms of this uh, email indicating there was a separate investigation by El Paso, there's a statement by uh, Miss McDonough on May 21 at 9:34, and Miss McDonough says uh, something different from the prior email, and I'm, I, I want to go through this. Uh, Miss McDonough says that Larimer County is not refusing to accept the certificates, but they're requiring a separate affidavit by the student. Um, I see that. And then the last sentence says, as long as they do some in-person classroom time, we will accept their certificate. That's uh, consistent with what you believe the position of the Larimer County Sheriff's Office was? Yes. Um, and the affidavit referenced uh, by Ms. McDonough in this email on May 21 is the same as the sort of notarized statement you were asking for on May 11th of 2020. I believe so, yes. Um, and and the, so the, the, the top response by Ms. Everett just asked for that affidavit and a form 
uh, created by the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. Do you know if the Larimer County Sheriff's Office created a form that was used to confirm attendance in a, a partial online, partial in-person class? I do not know if Angie had created a specific form for them to fill out or just ask them to, to uh, make a, a notarized affidavit uh, explaining the in-person portion of it. And so I want to ask about Ms. Ms. McDonough's uh, communications with other agencies and with Mr. Antelon on, on some of the communications you're included after the fact. So she, she, she forwards you that last email on May 11th and says, do we, do we have to continue to argue with this guy? Um, and so my question is, uh, is that typical for her communication that she, she sends things out or addresses applicants or addresses education providers for that matter? Um, and you're not typically copied on every single one of those communications. It's fair to say that Angie has a, uh, most of her communication does not include me. This was unique because it originated from an email that came to me and we were dealing uh, with a very unique situation that we hadn't, I was not aware we'd had before. Um, and so in terms of her either investigation or ad addressing issues of concern with educational providers, uh, that was left up, up to her as head of the CHP unit for Larimer County. Yes. Um, and it's also for, fair to say in terms of creating forms that would be used, for example, this extra affidavit that you uh, requested on, on May 11th of 2020, those forms, if they're created by Larimer County are created by Ms. McDonough. I believe that's accurate, yes. Or she may have somebody else help her with those, um, but, but it would be under her under her uh, responsibility. But there's not some review process, in other words, that where she has to go through to approve an official form for the CHP unit in your uh, office. In this situation, I, I don't, the use of the term form, I, I don't know in the big picture is accurate as much as simply uh, an affidavit uh, that's notarized. I'm going to show you exhibit six. And this appears to be Miss McDonough's email on June 24th of 2020. It does appear to be. And this seems to commit the same mistake that we had uh, earlier in May of 2020 uh, in that, that first line in her email. Um, re read through that for me. Okay, can I ask, is this gonna be a long one with uh, other emails below just so I get an idea what we're looking at? Um, I can go through the ones below, but it's it's sort of this back and forth with a, a private citizen. Um, okay. And so that it comes to the attention of Ms. McDonough because she's contacted by someone named Nick Smith. Okay. Um, and her eventual response on June 24th is the line that we have at the top. I do see that line. Um, and uh, this is similar to a line she had used in an email earlier in May um, that you said was, was uh, not consistent with the position of the office. Um, I wanna ask the same thing about this line. Uh, this line does not appear to be consistent with what you said in your mid-June 2020 email to the other sheriffs. I believe the way I, I would read that is that the in-person portion that was inadequate was that blank certificates were handed out and that was during the in-person portion. So uh, without a better explanation, I think it, it's consistent if that, if that helps answer your question. Um, well, let me, let me go down then to the, the, the section immediately before this when Ms. McDonough is again explaining that, that position that I keep coming back to. Um, Ms. McDonough, uh, same day is responding to Mr. Smith and says, if you are referring to guns for everyone, then that is correct. We are not accepting their certificates if the student took their class online. 
their classes do not comply with Colorado law, which requires the class to be conducted in person. Okay, I see that. Yeah, that, that's, that's not consistent with what we were doing. We were, we were actually taking um, the online, and I think it's it's a it's a not a, a well worded statement. It is inconsistent what what you said, for example, in your email just two weeks before, well, a little less than two weeks before this. Yes. And yes. it is not consistent with the law, which which does not express that classes have to be conducted in person. I'm clear, and the way we handle it is that we they have to have some in person portion, but they can have online. So a statement that they have that we don't take online. Um, is not correct. Okay. Um, in terms of this mistake, uh, did Ms. McDonough receive training on the change in the law after the 2013 legislative session regarding online classes? If you know. I don't know. You'd have to check with her. I, I will. Okay. Um, but in terms of Exhibit 6, uh, Larimer County sorry, the, the position of the Larimer County Sheriff's Office is not expressed well by the June 24th email at 1742, nor at 7.46 p.m. I believe that's accurate. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to describe the conflicting statements by Ms. McDonough and by you as, as really indicating two entirely separate uh, problems. And, and first of all, I'll ask, Ms. McDonough does not appear to indicate to, to anyone in her written communications that there's an issue with the authenticity of the blank certificates. Based on what I've seen, she's not addressing that uh, down to that level of what the specific concern was. And based on your emails all the way through uh, almost the end of June of 2020, uh, you are indicating a separate problem and that is the, the blank certificates being issued, not the, the training being offered uh, both online and in person. I'm drilling down to the specific part of it uh, being blank certificates, which I think uh, can be a part of the the in-person because that's when those are issued. They weren't issued, you know, um, you know, via email or via mail or anything. They were during the in-person portion. So, but as far as uh, uh, having me having issues with online training, that is not uh, consistent with our policy. Um, and to be clear, you are the, the final policy maker on, on any policy of the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. Yes. Uh, what uh, review responsibility have you undertaken uh, since this issue began in May of 2020 with Guns for Everyone and, and Edgar Antelon uh, to look at the, the uh, communications and uh, work of the CHP unit in your office uh, specifically around this, this very issue? What we've had since it has been a mixture of what you've seen in the emails and uh, our interactions between the county attorney and you and your client, uh, because we definitely made some changes. Um, and I, they're not reflected in these emails. They were more through uh, the attorneys on, uh, once we got verification about the certificates uh, being issued and trackable, that since then we have been uh, accepting most specific, like I can't address the other uh, trainers out there, but uh, guns for everyone. We actually have been accepting those certificates for online uh, combined with in-person once we're able to clarify the certificates. And I, I think that speaks a lot to the changes that were, that were made. I want to go back to this. Can you see that? Uh, oh, sorry. I, I messed that up. Give me one second. OK, you see the uh, complaint that we filed here, the last paragraphs? Yes. Uh, 
it sounds like you now agree with us. Can you increase the size of some have a little hard time reading them? Yes, sir. It sounds like from what you just testified that you agree that uh, the certificates of the plaintiff should not be rejected for using remote loaning in part. As to that, they're not being so that was part of what confused me was that it was asking for something that is not an issue right now because we're already an injunction against doing something that we're not doing. So that doesn't make sense to me. Well, we, we, we can de debate the, the, you know, the given the new masking orders in, in Denver and Jefferson County, for example, we can debate, you know, whether remote learning is going to come back or, or not. But my, my point is, Larimer County Sheriff's Office position is that you're not going to reject certificates if remote learning occurs in part for these classes. Um, I simply go back to we haven't been, we've been accepting them. So an injunction doesn't make sense to me to, to stop us from doing something we don't do. Well, according to, to Ms. McDonough from the emails that we've reviewed in June and May, uh, she was. I think the actions right now in our communications uh, uh, through council are not consistent with that, that we came to agreement and forgive me, the, last year is a blur, I think for all of us. And, mm -hmm. and uh, um, so I, I don't remember the dates on it, but uh, we, what wasn't addressed in our discussions yet this morning were those changes and the agreement that uh, if Mr. Antelon would, uh, be able to verify the certificates. We began accepting those online based certificates uh, and things that included remote learning. We haven't uh, been denying those once we're able to resolve the issue with the uh, uh, signing certificates and, and making sure they got to people uh, who had the name on them. You'll have, I don't know if it broke up for everybody right there, but I think you're going to have to repeat that answer because right in the middle, it, it stalled for just a couple of seconds. Essentially, I was just coming back to the same point that I don't agree that an injunction uh, to prohibit us from rejecting certificates taught partially by remote learning uh, makes sense because it's asking us to not do something that we're already not doing. We have been since uh, the negotiations uh, between our council and yourself and, and Mr. Antelon as of last summer, and forgive me, I don't remember the specific date, we have been accepting those. All we uh, required to get past was that issue of not uh, giving out blank certificates. But You understand that the, the, the policy statement from Ms. McDonough differs considerably from the, the statement you're making about the certificates, uh, both now and in your emails in June of 2020? You see the difference, right? The distinction between them? Her statements are not consistent with what our practice has been. And if we were to ask the court to declare that those statements were not only inconsistent with your department's own policy, as you've just stated, but also inconsistent with the law as we had stated in the lawsuit, you'd, you'd agree with both of those things. Uh, I would simply state that, um, you know, I, what our actual policies and, and what our practices are, are not consistent with a couple of statements that were brought before me in those emails. Uh, was there any uh, published or, sorry, did your office create any, any published guideline or new uh, internal policy guideline that talks specifically about uh, uh, the online classes being presented in part uh, by in-person presentation? I don't believe that our written policy changed. I, I believe uh, there was an education and discussion with Angie mm -hmm. During this, that was, I don't believe it was written. I think it was just in communication and verbal between her and I on what we were accepting and uh, how the law makes that interpretation. 
And when was that and, and how often did that occur? Yeah, it was, it's going to be over last summer. Uh, I'm going to say between the time that you have this communication on the emails and uh, when we made the change, uh, and that would be your communication, I think, between you and our council on accepting those with the sign with the agreement of signed certificates. I, I'm not aware of any issue since then uh, where it's been in question. Okay. Um, and had that occurred by the time you filed uh, your office's answer on August 6th of 2020, you said last summer, so had it occurred by then? I don't recall, I'd have to look over the, the documents. I don't recall when, when you and Mr. Aro worked on that. Okay. Does any other uh, educational organization or applicant uh, provide some form of authentication for the certificates they submit to your department when they apply for a, a handgun permit? I'm not aware of us getting blank certificates before. So <laughs> this was simple. This was not that I'm aware of uh, that we've had a problem with the authenticity that's been brought to my attention on a certificate. Um, Guns for Everyone has been, from my knowledge, unique in that. So that was a response to a unique situation. Has any other organization been investigated by the Larimer County Sheriff's Office for any issues with their educational presentation for CHP applicants? Not that I've been involved in or aware of. Uh, does any other organization submit the embossed uh, certificates that Guns for Everyone now submits? You'll have to ask Angie. I'm not Angie. sure on the, how those come. Um, was there a review of, of certificates for any other educational organizations after the uh, raising of these issues in May of 2020 uh, for this organization? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And was there any review of, of uh, program requirements and application requirements uh, after this issue came up other than for Guns for Everyone? Again, I believe we clarified the issue with the online portions and, and how, um, you know, where the statute was specifically um, on that. Um, other than that, uh, we didn't have anything specific we, we really dealt with this was this was a unique situation um in my 10 years in office i had never uh, been brought to my attention before so we really weren't looking to create new issues we were just trying to solve a problem and and to be honest to find a way to get get uh uh permits to those who went through guns for everyone that we could assure were were accurate and they weren't ones that had come out with uh no name on them when they came out. Okay. Um, you saw in the, in the May 11th, 2020 email uh, by Mr. Antalon that a student came to him indicating the certificates were simply being rejected. Um, are you aware of any uh, written inquiry to Guns for Everyone for verification of certificates being submitted by students in May, June, July or August of 2020. Were you asking if if the students had reached out to Guns for Everyone? No, I, I apologize. I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Did the Larimer County Sheriff's Office reach out to Guns for Everyone or Mr. Antalon before the students were rejected in May of 2020? I believe there's the communication that Angie had originally when we had learned that, or had, had I wouldn't say learned, we had received that email from Boulder. I believe that started the communication where she was inquiring about the program uh, to clarify uh, based on what we had heard then. So I know there was uh, that communication. Uh, what other ones went on would, would 
be what was provided uh, by council. And you believe that to be verbal, probably? Well, I would simply say that, you know, any of the emails are there as far as phone calls, I, we wouldn't have a record of, of phone calls that came in and Angie may have received those, but I don't believe she uh, has a practice of, of uh, documenting phone calls necessarily. Understood. Um, so to be clear, there, there's not typically a phone log uh, recorded of calls out of the department to someone like Guns for Everyone by the CHP unit? When you talk about a call log, I guess I'm not sure what you're you talking about a written log. I, I called somebody yeah. and I had this communication. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, no, not not typically. The, the incoming and outgoing phone calls aren't, aren't uh, made a written record of necessarily. Um, does the Larimer County Sheriff's Office have any uh, procedure set up to address issues with educational organizations that provide uh, education for CHP applicants? In other words, is there a, a policy anywhere that addresses what to do if you have an issue with such an organization? I'd have to review the specifics of our CHP policy. I don't have that in front of me. Um, Other than Ms. McDonough, would anyone else be in charge of addressing those sorts of issues with an educational organization? Primarily, that's going to be uh, Ms. McDonough okay. that deals with those. Again, she'll, she'll uh, occasionally reach out and talk to others and seek advice, but she's the one, uh, to my knowledge, that, that uh, has handled those since the beginning. Okay. It's about 9.39. I'd like to go off the record just briefly, and I want to ask a quick question to Mr. Arod and then Aro, and then we'll, uh, if we could just come back in five minutes or so. Okay, so Sheriff, I've got some wrap-up questions. I want to display for you uh, what is a newly marked exhibit that's exhibit 15, but it's the, the last few pages, actually last five pages of your disclosures. And it's uh, what you referenced before. You said you had to look at the policy manual for uh, the CHP program, sorry, CHP unit in your department. And uh, if you look at this, is, is that the policy manual for that unit in your uh, sheriff's office? Yes, it is. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know if I understand entirely uh, how these things get issued, but it says copyright on the bottom 95 to 2015 by Lexapol. Is that a, a provider for law enforcement offices uh, for, for either policy manuals or, or language for policy manuals? It's, it is a, a base that we work off is Lexapol, yes. And then uh, we customize it from what they, uh, what they put out is, is uh, uh, you know, kind of boilerplate policy. And there's no date really on the on the policy uh, other than that copyright mark on the bottom, which is why I was asking about it. Um, are these policies, uh, sorry, is this a policy that was in effect in May of 2020 for your office? I believe that it is because I don't believe I have uh, uh, made any any uh, approvals of changes to that policy that I recall. We actually use another system, uh, Power DMS, that tracks dates on those changes. Um, so it's not stamped on this, I apologize. And so that was gonna be one of my next questions was, has this been modified at all since May of 2020? Not, to, not that I'm aware of. However, uh, I will make a point to uh, verify that. Okay, very good, I appreciate that. Um, okay. 
in terms of your answers today, have you been uh, uh, truthful? Yes. Have you been as accurate as you could be given the information you're aware of? Yes, I have. And have your answers been complete? As complete as I can, yes. Is there anything that would now either refresh your recollection or cause you to change any answer that you've given? If you want to pull that policy back up, I know there was a question reference to policy. Uh, an opportunity to review that for a minute might be helpful. Okay, that should be the policy and I'll blow it way up again. Yes, thank you, okay. Just tell me to scroll down when you're ready. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and scroll, thank you. Okay, go ahead and scroll to the next page if you would. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and scroll down. Okay, go ahead and scroll to the next. Okay, go ahead and scroll down again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and scroll down again. And scroll again. Scroll again. I think we're almost there. Mm -hmm. And scroll again. I think that's probably the end that you can go ahead and roll. It. Yeah, that's the bottom. And, and to your question about that being in place, Mm -hmm. I believe that is consistent because it has the uh, uh, April 7th, 2020 addendum of a special order that dealt with uh, um, you know, a special order from the governor that allowed us to, to do the uh, process a little bit different on fingerprints since we were unable to, to get those um, in the beginning. So I think that's, that indicates the accuracy of this as a uh, uh, policy by, by May 20th. And to your question before, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the policy, as I look at it now, I realize um, does not address anything um, on the issue of the in-person versus uh, online. Uh, so it was never changed because that was never addressed one way or another, simply um, that we, we need to comply with uh, uh, how the statute lined that out, which, which clarified that it couldn't be an all online. Mm -hmm. before, but uh, doesn't appear to ad address it specifically in that policy. Understood. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's all the questions I have for Sheriff Smith. Thank you. Sheriff, sure. I'm going to ask you some clarifications on what you've been asked. Is that okay? Yes. And I am going to mute between each question just to try to cut back on feedback, but if uh, any party will let me know if they're having difficulty hearing me. 
Sheriff, do you recall how you first found out about a possible issue with gun for everyone's course in 2020? My recollection on that was the uh, email that came in uh, that listed Sheriff Pelly and uh, CBI uh, expressing their concerns with uh, how the program was conducted. Do you recall if that's Exhibit A that you've previously been asked to review? Yes. To your recollection, what was the original issue that was presented about guns for everyone's course in 2020? My recollection uh, of the original concern was that there was, in fact, no in-person portion, that the in-person was simply alleged to be a picking up of a certificate uh, from a classroom, but not any actual classroom uh, live presentation. In response to that concern, did you do anything? In response to that, uh, I rather quickly forwarded the email to Angie, again, consistent with her addressing those issues. And uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, if it was uh, via email or in-person discussion I had with her, uh, expressing concerns that we needed to find out um, if that was accurate, uh, that there was no on uh, no in-person. And so had asked Angie to uh, open that communication uh, with uh, Mr. Antelon or the folks from Guns for Everyone uh, to see if we could clarify whether that uh, uh, was accurate or inaccurate. And you provided testimony that at some point you directed an investigation to be undertaken. Is that correct? Yes. And I, I believe that was exhibit C. Do you recall that? I do. And why did you ask for an investigation to occur? I had uh, sent that request to Captain Coleman because based on Angie's communication uh, with Mr. Antle and with Guns for Everyone, I didn't feel like we were getting the answers. Um, and rather than simply uh, permanently revoke um, accepting his certificates, I thought this would be a reasonable alternative uh, to seeing if, if we could verify um, what the program actually was and wasn't because uh, we didn't get complete answers that were helpful to us. Um, I, I didn't necessarily want to continue with the uh, affidavits. That wasn't a, a first option. Uh, the best option was to find out if the program was uh, compliant. If it was, it made it easier for everybody. And you were presented Exhibit 4. Uh, do you recall Exhibit 4, which was an email from you to the other sheriffs outlining the investigations uh, into this? Yes, I do. Now, I know you've been asked about that email, but in your own words, can you explain what you recall being the outcome of that investigation? Uh, the outcome of the investigation that I thought was of value to share with the other sheriffs uh, was the fact that uh, when our investigator attended the course, um, he ended up leaving uh, with a certificate that was blank. It was signed, uh, I believe it was by Mr. Antelon. I, I don't recall for sure, but it was signed by Guns for Everyone and had no name filled in for the attendee. And why, if at all, was that a concern for you? Again, that was a concern because our issue was if we could verify that individuals were getting the training consistent with uh, CRS. And I, I really hadn't anticipated a possibility of blank certificates. I was actually hoping that we could you know, simply find out what the program was uh, for the, uh, you know, to make sure that there was, in fact, online. Uh, combined with in person, but when it came to a certificate with no name, um, that's something again we hadn't run into before. If I couldn't verify that uh, 
you know, the names put on there were actually issued by guns for everyone and not just an attendee who went and passed them around to friends. It, it was a concern and I didn't believe it'd be consistent with statute. Now you were also asked if anyone reached out to guns for everyone after that investigation. Do you recall that question? I do. And you were also asked about, I guess, potential resolution of the blank certificate issue. Do you recall that as well? I do. So I don't want to ask you if you recall who specifically reached out to guns for everyone. I do want to ask, to your knowledge, was there some conversation between Larimer County and guns for everyone that resolved the blank certificate? It's my recollection there was, and looking at the documents that we went over this morning, uh, the fact that when I sent that email to Captain Coleman, it already referenced the communication uh, between uh, uh, the client, our, uh, Guns for Everyone, and their attorney, and our agency, which went to our attorneys as well, that that was uh, moving forward it's my recollection that it was it was by end of summer uh, we unfortunately we had the the uh, Cameron Peak fire start mid-August so things got a little blurry then as to what the dates were but it was my recollection that it was in a matter of weeks to maybe a few months that I recalled it was resolved that we would get uh, verified names on the certificate so that we could get back to accepting the certificates from guns for everyone and based on the investigation, is it your understanding that Guns for Everyone was conducting a partially in-person online course during the summer of 2020? That is consistent with what the investigation revealed, yes. And was it your position or direction or policy to ever reject Guns for Everyone's certificate based on them being partially in-person and partially online? No. To your knowledge, do Gun for Everyone's courses continue to be partially in person, partially online? I, I actually don't know um, one way or another what they are. I recall a reference to um, being able to get back to mostly in person, but it, it wasn't a concern one way or another since uh, the online is acceptable. So I just haven't, I haven't paid attention to how it's presented these days. Thank you. Let me clarify that then. So if they are partially in person, partially online, do you have any concern or direction to reject those certificates? No, I have no concerns if it's if it's a partially online, partially in person. And if Guns for Everyone continues to be partially in, in person, partially online, do you have any intent to reject them based on that in the future? No. I think you just addressed this, but let me clarify. You reviewed the written policy on CHP, is that correct? Uh, yes, I have. Now, you also previously testified that you were agreeing to accept partial online, partial in person courses. Yes, that was the agreement that we made last summer. Do you see any rationale to amend your policy to accept something that you were already accepting? No, that was what was confusing to me was it was asking for a court intervention on something that uh, we're already doing. All right, are we ready to go off the record? Yes. Okay. 